Hi everyone, Sergio here and this is Heartlands. It's been a while since I made a Heartlands Let's Play, but I'm back, so uh, this is version 0.8.6, the latest version so far. I'm playing on Steam. So yeah, uh, I've decided to do a tutorial first, before we get to the proper long Let's Play. Uh, because I've never I've never actually recorded a tutorial before, so maybe I'll be able to uh, explain uh, some things to those of you who've never played the game. So, yeah. Uh, first of all, your city needs people. It's called a map to find a good empty location for your houses. Okay, so let's uh, let's think. Where do we want to build our city? Uh, Probably, well, well, right here, actually, that's a good place. Uh, what do we need? We need 12 houses, so basically, you don't build uh, houses, you build like uh, plots of land, kind of like in SimCity, and the people come and uh, build their houses uh, in these locations. The more resources you provide to your houses the bigger they get and the more people come and the more workforce you have so basically uh, the more workforce you have the more industries you can build the more resources you can produce and uh, it's kind of like a the more people come so it's kind of like a circle and the tutorial uh, it lets you see the first few steps in this uh, chain, migrants have arrived. So the migrants come uh, from, uh, let's unpause, from the corner here. Let's go oh. on. Look, your majesty, look. So uh -huh. we have girls in, uh, hello. in the new version. Uh, hello. That's great. What do we need to do? Oh, we, we just need to reach uh, 60 population. We can uh, speed the game up. My little farm. So the first resource that we need is food. And you can see on this uh, icon here, it tells you what people need in this house. So let's build a... Uh, there are several types of food. Some of them are more nutritious, some of them are less nutritious. We're gonna build a uh, turnip farm. Which is not a very good source of food, but it'll do. For now. And let's build some plots. I like to do it this way, 5x5. Five five. Oh misplace this and then in the middle we can put a scarecrow okay and the scarecrow has two tile radius as you can see here so the guy started planting turnips and it will take uh, a couple of minutes for the turnips to grow so let's just speed it up and let's build a storage yard as well. And you can set the storage yard to only accept turnips. Like that. Okay, so... Uh, so yeah. So I've been to Germany for three weeks. It's been fun. I love Germany. It's a great country. Especially, you know, the small villages. Great architecture. Kinda reminds me of this game, actually. Well, not like that, but when it's developed and stuff. Yeah, lovely people. Great beer. Actually, speaking of beer, on the first day... Uh, they had, like, a celebration. They five hundred years anniversary. Can you believe this? Five hundred years anniversary of the first like beer standard 
that was made into a law in Bavaria. So yeah, and uh, they made this special anniversary beer, Jubiläums beer or something like that. And oh my god, this beer is so great. It's like the best beer I've ever tasted. So uh, yeah, come to Germany. Uh, now you need to deliver food to your houses. Okay, so uh, the way it works, we build a peddler's tent and the peddler uh, delivers all the goods people need to the houses. And once houses get, uh, as, as we can see here, those four houses have gotten food from the peddler they evolve next month they will evolve to the next level and more migrants will come yeah basically this says what i've just said your majesty your majesty yes, yes. okay and uh for the next step we just need to evolve uh, 12 houses so let's just wait for some food to be delivered and as, as you can see, the next step is uh, alcohol. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. Okay, time to cook. Oh no, that's not what we're gonna be doing next. Next we're gonna be doing medicine. So, uh, each house requires one load of medicine every year. So we need to build a apothecary, first of all. Uh, let's put it there. The pedal tent is uh, slightly misplaced because I, I messed up. I thought it's 3x3 uh, three three in, in the new version, the new sprite. I thought it's 2x2 two two, as it was before, but it's apparently 3x3 three three, so I have to update that in the new version. We built an apothecary. Uh, we also need a herbalist to produce medicine. Is it? This is connected, yes. So, and herbalist needs some logs. So let's build a uh, woodcutter's lodge and connect everything with a road. All right. Deliver medicine to your houses. So if you don't have uh, many trees, you can build a forester's lodge. Well, we can build one like here. And you can tell the forester to plant trees, for example. It can also plant mushrooms and flowers. And it will plant uh, trees in this in this area. Okay, so uh, we have mushrooms, and the guy Your is majesty. coming with logs. Speed it up a bit, and that's a forester. Mm -hmm. And Herbalist started making medicine. Once it's done, the guy will come out of the apothecary, take the medicine, and bring it uh, to the apothecary. Every building, almost every building, requires workers. So as you can see, uh, apothecary has eight out of eight workers, and in total, uh, we have only four people who are unemployed. Not everybody in your village works. It's about 50% or so. Okay, so uh, alcohol. Let's build a winery. There are several types of alcohol as well. Different cultures have different types of alcohol. Some grapes. 
Uh, that's gonna be 8. That's gonna be 12. We need 24. Almost everything is 24 based. So, for example, one farm can work with uh, 24 plots, one binary can work with 24 great plots, and so on. One herbalist uh, lodge produces 24 units of medicine, one woodcutter's lodge produces 24 logs, and so on. So, uh, expand your city to have 24 houses. Let's do that. I uh, messed it up a little bit. Okay, let's let's do another district here. And let's remove those trees. Make sure that everything is connected. Okay. I left the gap between those two rows of houses because we're gonna put some beautifications in the middle and now we're just waiting for people to occupy those houses your majesty look look the names are randomly uh. generated mm -hmm. It's kind of based on old British names. Your Majesty? Huh? President Bailey. That kind of sounds similar a bit. And almost. We need just a few more people. Next month, those houses will evolve. Speed up. God, this game was so great on the on the big screen. Okay, uh, taxes. The major source of money, uh, apart from trade, is taxes. So we need to build a uh, town hall first. Let's put it, I don't know, here maybe. And uh, we can also build a tax office. And uh, the tax collector yes. will just... Mm -hmm. Well, as you can see, he collects coins from the houses. And the more evolved your houses are, the more taxes they pay. So next we need to build a big stream. Now as I've said uh, turnips are not a very good food source but if you feed turnips to pigs you get pork and pork is a great food source. Well, not the pork itself, but uh, first that that's made out of out of pork. Let's have six pigs, and each pig uh, provides five units of meat. So again, six pigs, twenty-four units of meat per year. And uh, it uses 24 units of turnips. So next we need a smokehouse. A smokehouse. Where shall we put it? Let's put it. Let's put it here. And the smokehouse requires logs. So let's build another woodcutter. So uh, the next step in the resource chain is uh, furniture. So once those houses 
and get alcohol. We haven't produced any yet, but it will happen eventually. Uh, once those houses re uh, receive alcohol, the next thing they need is uh, furniture. And in order to make some furniture, we need to build another woodcutter, build a uh, sawmill, and a carpenter. Sawmill makes planks, and the carpenter makes furniture. Uh, also, uh, also, yeah, we need a. Uh, let's build another storage yard. And let's make it accept leather, uh, furniture, and burst. Oh, and wine. Just in case, so we have like a like a buffer, like a spare resources. Also, yeah, also, uh, pig tree produces leather. So we don't need leather right now, but we're gonna need it later. So I, I'm gonna stockpile some of that leather. Okay, so this houses need food, but soon we're gonna have meat from those pigs. And it's gonna be fine. So let's speed it up. Once turnips get fed to the pigs, pigs give birth to piglets. Oh, it's so loud! God damn it, those pigs! I can also zoom out, so it's not that loud. So once uh, pigs g gave birth to piglets, they get fat, and fat pigs, large pigs, can be butchered at the pig string, and you get meat and, uh, and leather, much like in real life. So, the grapes are done, so the, the wine maker collects them and makes wine. And we're gonna see these houses evolve as they get alcohol. Okay, and the decoration. So uh, there is a, a thing called appeal, and each house, well, most of the houses, affect this appeal value of each tile. So, uh, for example, town hall improves it, while industry houses decrease the appeal in the area. So you don't want uh, industry building be too close to the houses because certain levels of houses require certain appeal value of the tiles. So in order to improve the appeal in the area, we can build uh, decorations. Let's build a few. Misplay that slightly, but it will do. Okay, let's turn that off. As you can see, it's all yellow now, so it's highest appeal here. And this houses will evolve to level four in the next month because they have everything they need at this stage. So, oh, some of the pigs have been butchered already and we're making burst.
Now this probably is a slow start in the in the proper game. You may want to speed it up a bit if you're playing against uh, AI opponents because at about year three, I think, on normal, you can get attacked. Huh? And I'll be talking Hello. about how to speed up development in the next Let's Play. So. Our unemployment is only 2%, 3%. Oh, by the way, and uh, not here, but here. We can control the tax level. Currently, we're not getting a lot of taxes because, well, our houses are not very developed and the tax level is medium. But if you want, you can increase taxes, which uh, decreases the percentage of people work so if you leave it on altar you can always have enough workers well if you have if you can possibly have enough workers and uh, the maximum tax level for that amount of workers and you can change the priorities for example if we do that we can make sure that woodcutting can, can always have maximum amount of workers but I mostly leave it on auto. So let's speed it up again. Okay, uh, strike the earth. Now we need to make some iron and in order to do that. We need coal and iron ore. So let's... There's coal. Where's iron? There's iron. Okay, so let's build some coal diggers here, four of them, and let's build some iron ore diggers here. We need to connect that, oh, turn notifications off. We need to connect that with a road. Okay. And we need to build two smelteries. Smelteries use iron ore and coal to make iron. So let's build two of them. Now, uh, iron dig uh, coal diggers and iron diggers only produce 12 units of coal and iron per year. So, four of them produce 48 and one smeltery can process 24, so we have two smelteries for that. And let's uh, build a storage yard for the iron. Let's put it here. Let's make it accept only iron. Okay. Oh, and all our houses have evolved to the maximum level, now they need clothes to evolve again and uh, in this tutorial we're not gonna produce any clothes, so this is the maximum level you can have in the tutorial there's a lot of people in the village walking around hello, hello. okay, let's speed it up as we wait for iron to be made they made some already. This is probably my favorite type of house. White with this kind of bending roof. I'd like to live in, in the house like that. Well, with, with all the modern things inside, like the, the internet and the proper bathroom and stuff.
Okay, so we're halfway there. There is a graveyard. And you can't build near the graveyard. There are several other neutral or not so neutral uh, buildings and uh, characters. Okay, we need now uh, we have enough iron and leather so we can start producing military. So, in order to create a squad of units, you need to build a barracks. One barracks for each squad, and each squad has eight units in it. So we also need an armor shop to make armor, and a weaponsmith shop to make weapons. So basically, each unit has a weapon and armor. Axemen have iron axes and chain mails, and uh, once one chain mail in one axe is delivered to the barracks and if you have enough money one axeman will be produced trained rather we don't need spears and we don't need leather armor okay so yeah there are several uh, neutral and not so neutral structures on the map not in the tutorial though in a in a proper game and you can get attacked by monsters and invaders and there is a world map there is no one except us on the world map in the tutorial again There are rival cities, so you can get attacked by rival cities and you can trade with, them, trade with them, and so on. So yeah, uh, people ask me, uh, yeah, we have our first uh, X-Men, two battle, two battle. So people ask me, uh, why this game is still in early access and uh, the answer is, well, I just know, I just don't know what's gonna happen when I release it, you know? It's kind of scary because that's the only source of uh, money for me. So yeah, and it's, not, and it's not like I have a lot of money saved to experiment either, so, so yeah. But uh, it's mostly finished, it's version 0.8.6. It's pretty close to 1.0, uh, so yeah, uh, th this game was reviewed as, I know there are people who don't buy uh, early access games uh, as, as a principle, and I don't don't really understand that, but why would you do that? And Heartlands actually was was reviewed as early access but good. <laughs> so yeah. The third guy. We can build another um, another armorer and weaponsmith to speed things up it's probably not gonna matter since we don't have that many troops to produce you wanna have normally you wanna have at least a couple of squads uh, early to protect yourself from monsters and stuff and uh, the very fact that you have military prevents 
the opponents from attacking you. Alternatively, you can just disable monsters or and or uh, rival invaders in the options before you start the game, so you don't have to care ab uh, about those things, and you can, you know, learn the game and get used to it before uh, playing it with with military. And my axe. Love those new buildings. They're great. There's a chest. There are thieves who can steal stuff. They can steal uh, things from the storage yards and they can steal money from the tax collector. And the town hall. Okay. We've got I'm our sorry, squad. My lord, I'm terribly sorry to interrupt you, but townspeople keep talking about the dead coming back from the graves near our city. Personally, I don't believe in such nonsense, but just out of curiosity. Maybe we should go and check. Go to, and yeah. The forces of darkness are coming. And, uh, oh, we need to protect the city. You can send your military to destroy the graveyard. Otherwise, skeletons will keep uh, spawning. We lost one guy. But we should, we should be fine. And that's it. That's the tutorial. Now, uh, it doesn't explain all the features in the game. There is like uh, research, uh, spells, fame, diplomacy, trade, all those things, the neutral monsters and characters and stuff. But uh, I like when the game lets you find things yourself. So I haven't included that in the tutorial. And it's a pretty long tutorial. You know, I, I don't know how how long we've been playing, but you know, it's probably like 40 minutes or so. So yeah, uh, check out the game. It's on Steam. It's cheap. It's good. It's polished. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.